Okay, we're going to start assignment three. And like so many digital projects, it doesn't start from nothing. It starts from pre-existing reference. But this time, the pre-existing reference are projects we've already done. So the first thing I do to do assignment three, which is a creature scape, is I go to my assignment one folder and I find my finished PSD file, the green one, for assignment one. I open that up. Next, while that's opening, I can navigate to assignment two, which we just finished. In assignment two, I'm not going to open up the PSD. Instead, I'm going to find the PNG that I submitted because that's already all merged together and cleanly cut out. And I can double check that by double clicking and opening it in preview. All right. So I uh, did this after I submitted my assignment to, and in preview, I just did little tricks. And so I encourage you to try this with your preview. Just go to tools and adjust color and then try auto levels to balance out the histogram. Because before we bring it into a new environment, we want it to have the most potential to fit into any environment, which means that its lighting is balanced, its shadows and color are balanced. And then sometimes what you can do is use that to inform improvements to your creature composite. So it's like driving, it's doing a test drive of the car that you just built. So let me show you what I actually did. And you might consider this before you bring your PNG into your landscape and before you submit your final PNG. So this is where I left off with assignment two. This was my final project that I submitted. But then I outputted the, the PNG and opened it in preview and then did auto levels and what it did is it brightened it up to this. So it's a little bit easier to see if I have a gray background. So it went from this to this. And I said, oh, I like that. I like how that brings out the color. Then I noticed, you know, that foot really isn't in the right position. If I were to trace over this and find the hips, that, that leg would start there, but it would go out to the side and it would be hidden back here. So then I decided, well, I got to cut out that foot. So I did that just to the PNG, just to this layer. And then I decided I had that problem where if there's anything I could change about my creature, I would, I would want these ears to stand out a little bit better against this shell or this, this back plate. And I realized the best way to do that is probably with color. I don't want the same kind of color notes in here as in here. So then I just duplicated the ears, put them on top, and I burned the edges, and I, I uh, dodged the highlights so that they stand out a little bit. And then I did another duplication where I fixed the color. And so I made the color more like the neck color and less like the shell color. So th those are all the improvements I made. And then I thought, well, that's a pretty good improvement. I'm feeling more solid about this. I basically improved my assignment and now I'm going to resubmit it. So I need to then turn off the background file. First save it, of course, as a PSD file. So I have all of this extra work and I've still got all the components in here, which will be helpful if I want to animate it or do something else with it later. Um, and then I'm going to save it as an online file format that supports transparency. So I'll save it as a PNG to the desktop. Always have your name and always have some description of it as your file. And I, I like to save files I'm using to the desktop so I can see that they're there. And that's how I got the PNG I'm actually going to bring in for assignment three. So I've improved upon assignment two and I, I keep encouraging you guys to to make improvements. All right now I can test it. I can open it up in preview by double clicking it. I can hit auto levels, make sure its histogram is optimized. It brightened it a little bit. But basically what I mean by optimizing the histogram is you wanna make sure there's no empty space, right? These are the highlights. 
these are the shadows. You want these little selectors for your brightest white, your darkest dark, to be right at the edges of that pixel information. Because if they're not, it means your, your whole image is kind of limited to, in value, and you don't want it limited in its value range. You can also decide to, to adjust its levels generally. And some of you have just things that are too dark in general, like you overburned, so you might lighten your midtones a little bit. But that's why I like auto levels. It will kind of sh balance it for you. And then if anything got cut off, I'll, I'll move these tails back in. So that's pretty safe to do. You can also see your pixel quality, right? And your edge quality. And that's pretty good for what we're doing. There's little things, but that's not going to matter once it's on a landscape, once there's a background. All right, and notice I don't have any shadow or any ground underneath my finished character composite because I'm going to want to use the landscape to provide that. I don't want to bring any of that with me. Okay, so once the PNG is done, you can just close it. It will save those and then you can submit that to PhotoBucket as a resubmission for your PNG for assignment two. And when you resubmit, you just add it in, and then you, you do the semester code, SP18, a space, your name, and then the word resubmission. Okay, but now I'm ready to do assignment three. So now what I do with this PNG layer is I go to my very top layer of assignment one. You should have multiple layers. We're going to need them. And I'm going to drag and drop that PNG right into it just like we did when we were compositing other people's pixels, except now this is our composition. And it's going to be a smart layer as it comes in, but you can play with angling it. I'm going to try to make the feet match. I can play with flipping it, flipping it horizontally. Kind of like the idea of it coming in this way. Um, ideally, to really show off your creature and show off your landscape, you want to consider a few things. First, you might consider, that looks pretty good, uh, you might consider what parts of your landscape are a little problematic. And the parts of my landscape that bug me is I didn't really transition this all that smoothly, right? It's like this kind of brambles of highlights and things. And I can burn those down and I can get that to work. But at this point, this is one of the last things I added. At this point, it might just make it better to hide it a little bit with my creature. Also, this little area here, that bugs me a lot. This transition of the pipe in the foreground and I have the pipe overlapping it, but to have the pipe behind it looks a little weird too. And I can warp the pipe and distort it and cut it off in a different place. But sometimes it's just easier to cover it up and do something that's a stronger focal point, right? Because here I'm asking you to be kind of storytellers. This is a, a figurative element in your landscape. And you want it to feel like it can move and inhabit that landscape. So what's the best placement for it? I also don't want you to make it too small, right? So if I make a duplicate of this, you can try multiple placements. Because if I'm thinking this is just kind of like a lizard size thing and I'm going to have it climbing over, over this, that's fine. But it just doesn't have the visual impact, right? Then it feels like another little focal point along with this and with this and with this. And it doesn't, doesn't make a big, a big to-do. And the beauty of having it be a smart layer is I can keep transforming it and I'll never lose pixel quality because it's always referencing my original PNG. So what if I want it to just be a huge, you know, um, colossal creature in the background, almost part of the landscape? Well, I can put him back there. And how do I make him sink into the landscape? Well, I just use command left bracket and start sinking him through the layers. And, until he's back there. Right? But the problem with that is that he's not really recognizable as a creature without animation or something. So you decide what's best, but you can try multiples, multiple placements. I'm liking this one right now. And it looks like he's about to take a drink. You know, this poses him well for animation. 
You also want to note where the feet touch the ground, because those are areas where you're able to sink the character into that setting. So I have claws here, I have grass here I can put between the claws, there's going to be a shadow there, and then I can have his foot here behind the, uh, the little box of debris, and that's going to help. And then his neck is over this little outcropping, that's going to help. Yeah, lots of things are going to, going to make this work. It also kind of works for the lighting, but I'll make it work better for the lighting as I integrate it. So once you have a placement, you're all set. Before you do anything else, keep it as a smart layer. You're going to say File, Save As, and you're going to save it as Assignment 3 to the desktop. So you do Command D, and we're going to call this CreatureScape as a PSD file to save that. So really all we've done is brought assignment one and assignment two together. But you don't want to bring assignment two in until it's cleaned up. right? So you don't have lots of little debris you have to clean up here. So now it's actually a really easy process. First of all, remember that I have texture fills. These kind of transparent layers here, this mist. And if I move my character underneath that, it's going to change the lighting and the atmosphere and the shadows all on my character. And sometimes that works really well, sometimes it doesn't. I think like about this amount works pretty well. That makes it a little bit too much blended into the landscape, and I wanted to stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to keep my creature at about that level. There's also maybe foreground elements that need to come in front. So for instance, what's going to be in front of your character? If I wanted this, let's see, where is it? If I wanted this element here to be in front of my character, well then I would take that element and I would move that up. Right? And then you can erase away from it. But the easier thing to do, and this is what we learned with our creature composite, is instead of just moving all of it up, we can take parts of it. So I'm on this layer now. There we go. With this little debris. And so what I'm going to do is circle around anywhere that that might overlap my character. Really just about here. I can cut it around the spikes, right? And then I'm going to duplicate it, Command-J. And then I can move that duplicate up and above my character, like so. And because it's a duplicate, then I can feel very comfortable erasing away from it without doing any damage. And I still, I need to clean it up a little bit so that claw is showing up better. But that's, that's what you can do by creating your own um, kind of cutouts from reference you've already created. Right. Okay, next what's necessary. I need to put a shadow uh, underneath him. So this is a little, this is a new process. So I'll save my work there. The CreatureScape Assignment 3 is well on its way. That means I don't over overwrite Assignment 1. And so um, the next step I'm going to show you from my past student examples, or my past instructor examples. We're going to use what's called um, a gradation overlay, or a gradient layer overlay, where we fill a blank layer with 50% gray, and then we dodge and burn it behind our character to make a shadow just on the gray. And this is like a, a lighting plate in animation. Then when we set this layer, this gray layer that we've dodged and burned, we set it to overlay mode, not normal mode, not multiply mode like we've used before, but overlay mode, then the 50% gray will disappear. And the only things that will show are things that are darker than 50% gray and things that are lighter than 50% gray. And when you overlay that on top of your landscape, 
it puts the shadows in and the highlights. 